The First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution guarantees Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech or of the press. This is the exact text of the First Amendment. While there are other laws, both protecting and limiting speech in the press, this is the one that journalists stand behind. While the First Amendment applies to everyone, those rights fall into two main categories for journalists. The first category is the privilege and protection for journalistic activities. While the second category is access to government operations and records. You've heard the term privilege before. In a legal context, it means a benefit enjoyed by a specific group. Journalists are protected by the fair report privilege. Now this allows journalists the freedom to report anything they see or hear that's said in an official government proceeding without fear of being sued or censored, no matter how slanderous or defamatory the facts or quotes might be. Now journalists still have to be accurate and fair when using this fair report privilege. Journalists are also protected by the opinion privilege this protects the written opinions of journalists from libel suits. And the opinion privilege recognizes the distinction between fact and opinion. We'll delve a little deeper into this in the few slides. Our next category is fair comment and criticism. Like the opinion privilege, fair comment and criticism allows journalists to criticize performers politicians, or other matters of public interests. We'll delve into this a little deeper in a few slides as well. Now, the Federal Privacy Protection Act protects you and your newsroom from searches and seizures. Should you interview someone who broke the law and then police demand information about it? The law would not apply, however, if police suspect that you are involved in the crime. Finally, 50 states, excuse me, 40 states, including North Carolina, have shield laws that protect journalists by preserving the confidentiality of their sources. Now, this protection is not absolute, which means that in some cases, journalists must choose between revealing confidential information or going to jail. Now in the textbook, Harrower poses this unresolved question. Are bloggers entitled to the same rights and protections as mainstream media reporters? Well, as of January, 2014, the answer is yes. The Ninth Circuit Court ruled in Obsidian Finance Group versus Crystal Cox that the First Amendment protections do not depend on whether one is trained as a journalist or works for a traditional news organization. That means bloggers do have the same rights and protections as mainstream media reporters. The second right enjoyed by journalists is access to government operations and records. Journalists, as representatives of the public, have access to courtrooms, to meetings of governmental agencies and other public bodies, and to governmental records, but exceptions and gray areas do exist in each of these categories. Courtroom proceedings from the Durham County Court to the US Supreme Court are open. Dockets are often posted online, so you'll know where and when to show up for a case that you're covering. Now, some have argued that media coverage can harm defendants, making it impossible for the defendant to receive a fair trial. Others claim that cameras can turn a courtroom into a circus. In keeping with the First Amendment, the US Supreme Court ruled that criminal trials must be open and remain open to the public and the media, except for when an overriding interest justifies closure. Journalists have the right to attend public meetings. 
arguing that government officials should not be allowed to make decisions behind closed doors. Every citizen has the right to be able to monitor the government's activities and hold public officials accountable for their decisions. And it's the press's job to monitor meetings on the public's behalf. Now, state laws on what constitutes a meeting are often vague. Generally, if the government board or commission receives revenue from taxes, it's subject to open meeting laws. Now, public boards can still adjourn into executive session to discuss personnel matters or legal matters. Open meetings laws are called sunshine laws. And every March, the Sunshine Center at the North Carolina Open Government Coalition hosts a Sunshine Week event around the state to celebrate. I've attended a few over the years and even met Pat McCrory at Sunshine Day at an event before he became governor. Finally, journalists have the right to access public records. Shouldn't all government records be accessible to the public? Public officials must be held accountable for the money they spend, the actions they take, and the mistakes and corruptions they try to conceal. The 1966 Freedom of Information Act requires federal agencies to make most of their records available. Now, every state has its own version of FOIA. Problems arise when poorly trained or downright shady government officials either don't know the law or don't respect it, thus denying legitimate requests for public information. Now here's a short video from FOIA.gov that gives a little more information on the law.